Hi everyone, JP here, and it's almost two o'clock, like Neil Malan says in sunny side South Africa. And sunny side, no, not sunny South Africa. There we go. We're going to be making this parallax portfolio. Now, a portfolio website has one thing in mind, and that is to present projects. It can be anything woodwork, it can be school projects, it can be poetry, photography, artwork, pottery. And in this case, it's going to be from an interior designer and certain interior designs that she has made. So that is the idea. It is not the website per se that's about her company. It's about the projects. And that's what a portfolio website is all about. And it's a really effective tool if you want to show prospective clients what you can do. That's why you need to keep it to the core and you need to keep it simple. This is a multi-page site, so though it may look like a single website, I'm going to show you, it is much more than that. The reason why you think it's a single page website is because you don't see a header with a menu at the top. So let's have a look at the home page. And as you scroll through it, you see the parallax effect of these projects. And to be honest, I stole this idea. I didn't invent it. Like I say, I didn't invent the line. I only extended it. So here we go. And this is in our parallax home page that we have here. And then if you click here on any of these projects, and I've only worked on this one, I'm not going to do all of them. If you click here on view project, it's going to take you into a specific project. And here you go. This is our project, a little bit about the project. Here's a the color theme, then a little bit more about the project, mumbo jumbo, and the contact form here at the bottom and the back home down here. You can also see there's an icon up here very nice, very subtle, and it fits this interior design concept perfectly. So if you click back here, it's going to take you way to the front. And you can do what I did there with that for each of these projects. You can extend the projects here at the bottom and, well, build it out to your heart's content. Let's just have a look quickly at tablet and also at mobile before we start building so that you can understand you're going to be a tad slightly disappointed when it goes to tablet and mobile. And I know I'm going to hear the voices from the web design stylist, or the <laughs> I know you're going the design stylist. I know you're going to say, I've been asking for this for two years. When you go to tablet, you see you do not get the parallax, 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 parallax effect. It's static images, or at least they don't move. They're not fixed. Same for mobile device. If I go to my phone, you see, there we go. Some it works, some it don't work. Some it don't work. So remember that. But even in that case, if you just look here at this cell phone, where is my cell phone? Make it. If this were the only device that the person could access the site on, they will have it. It's nice full height. And if they click here on your view project, it takes you into the project and your project perfectly displays on your mobile device. Maybe I can do a little bit tweaking here for the size, but otherwise perfect. You can interact with it and it has a very nice display on the front for your various projects. This looks really good. I mean, this is so simple, minimalistic, that it makes a very good impression. Let's go and build this out. I used the Blisk browser for this. So I'm going to close it. And we go into our Brizzy dashboard. And if you don't know how to get yourself a Brizzy account, then simply go up here to Brizzy Cloud and go to Brizzy.cloud and sign up for one. It's for free. What I'm going to show you, you can do in all Brizzy platforms. You can do it in the Brizzy WordPress free and pro, and you can do it in Brizzy Cloud free and pro. The reason I'm using Brizzy Cloud free, because if you don't own any of these projects and you want to test and work along, then Brizzy Cloud free is the way to go. This is my project area, and you can see I have a number of projects here, a few that we've already worked on, others that I'm playing around with. Let's start from the beginning, and disclaimer, what I just showed you may not be repeated. I tend to make a little bit alterations as I go along. Maybe I feel like pink isn't the thing today and I go for green, you never know. Create a new landing page, and Brizzy Cloud is going to create a new project for you Give it the name project with the number that it's currently in the row. So I've got, what, seven, so this is number eight. And we we'll call this Parallax, and I think I got the spelling right. Parallax Portfolio. And I'm putting an M. It's just my way to indicate whether this is a multi-site or a 
single page site, multi page site and single page sites. Just my reference. So when I work on these tutorials and once you've done that, you can start building. Click here on edit project. Let's dive right in. Start building your page. Click here and we're going to do everything from scratch. Add a blank block and then let's bring in our first background image. Mm, image and it will open your finder and your explorer. Here is my first image and bring it in. Now before I bring in any other content, I'm actually going to set the height to a specific height I want to use. You go to the block settings. So if you're here and you see the little icon up here, click on that. And over here, the settings cock, it will show you the width, which is the canvas. You see these little dotted lines and you will see the height. And we're going to make changes to both of these. The first one then is let's go to a height and you see currently it's set to auto and auto means as you add content, it will keep stretching and adjusting according to the content that you are adding. Then the height here, you have an option for custom and full height. And we're going to go for custom. Now over here, you see it's currently set at 400 pixels, but I'm going to put it on percentage. Before I do that, I'll just drag it over here. Otherwise it's going to jump enormously. And then I'm going to put it on percentage and you will see it jumps now to 97%. That means it is filling on the display of your monitor, 97% of the real estate, all the way from the top here to the bottom here. Let me show you, I'm going to publish it. And then if I click here on preview, it's going to fill my screen here from the top to the bottom. And there's going to be 3% real estate open here at the bottom. And there you see it is. And if I were to make changes to this, like so, and I drag it, it doesn't matter how I drag it, let me just bring it in, that 3% at the bottom is going to remain. So I can drag it like this, I can grab it here, Where's my corners? I th ah, there we go. But wherever I drag it, you're going to see 3% of the height will remain white. And that is what we mean by that 97% full height. Let's maximize it, close this, and go back to the block settings. Now you have an idea how that custom height works. And I'm going to put my custom height on 60%. All right, so this is where we go got 60% here. And this is what we're going to be working with for all of the blocks that are going to follow. The next thing is to go back to the block to the settings and you see this container here. I'm going to stretch that to full width, which means currently you have this space here on the left and on the right. So anything you bring in will only be able to go into this container. And I want it a little bit more here to our left. Go to settings again. And over here with the width, you click there on full. And now you will see it stretches all the way to the left and all the way to the right. That's also not ideal, but I will do that a little bit later. All right, let's click outside and see what we've got here. This is our first block that we're going to be working with. And we want to bring in a little block here with some wording in it and then a button which they can click that will take us to that page. At this point, you have to get a little bit creative. You're going to run into some challenges, how you're going to move things around, and maybe how you will do it will be entirely different, how I am going to approach it. What I'm going to do, maybe there is some aha moment that you get, or maybe you think, ah, that is such a lot of extra steps, or you're going to think, yeah, that's neat. It all depends. In the end, we're going to get the job done. I'm going to bring in a column first. And actually, when I did the demo, I found out I didn't need that column at all, but I'm still going to stick to the column. Why am I going to bring in the column? Why do I feel it's like a safety net for me? Because currently, if I bring in all my elements on this page, they're all over the page. That's fine. But when I go into mobile and tablet, I may need a little bit more control on the left and the right and bring in a little bit spacing. And you can do that more easily with columns. But like I said, even though I used the column, I found out that because the block contains padding lately, I can actually do it with the block, but I'm still going to bring in my column. It's unnecessary. I telling, I'm telling you, I think it's unnecessary, but I'm still going to do it. So to do that, I click here, bring in add elements, go to column, click and drag. 
and then I will remove one of these columns, right click and delete. Now I just have this one column. To complicate matters more, I'm going to put in two more columns inside this. Yeah, I know it doesn't make any sense, but this is how I started. It took me down this path and I'm happy with it. So I'm going to bring in another column element and you will see that columns within columns have pink borders and the column, the last column on the level has a blue border. So there you can see all of them blue and pink within pink. Next, I'm going to bring in text here. This will be the text or the name of my project. For that, I will need a text element. Click here, add elements, bring in my text element and drop it there. So triple click to select all the text and I'll type there simple project title. That is the name you're going to add in there for the project that you want. Let's put it on white so we can see it better for now, but we're going to change that soon. And then I want to change the font. But before I do that, if I go here and I change the font here, the fact is that I'm actually going to be using the same font throughout. So changing the font every time here is going to be quite a lot of extra work. So the best thing is if you're going to be working with one font to go into the styling over here and change it here, that font will come in automatically. And I'm going to click on paragraph because that's where we're going to start. And then I'm going to look and I think I went in the end for blinker, right? So I'm going to go with blinker. Let me see. I think Blinker was the font that I had put my heart on in the end. Then what I'm going to do is I'll increase the size for this one to around 32. Good. And then I'm going to change the color. And I'm going to change it to this color that's there by default. I'm going to leave that. And that is too big. Now I know it's too big, so I'm going to reduce it 28. Next, I'm going to give this column a color. So I actually want to put a box, a frame behind my text, and that's going to be white. All right, so you see what I've done here. And then I'll do a few changes to the padding. Let's first go to the text and get rid of all the extra line heights and padding. If you click here, go to topography, you will see line height is at 1.9. I'm going to highlight that and put it on 1. Then the next thing I'm going to do is go to the settings, more settings, and over here on the margin, I'm just going to link them so that the margins are zero. Next, let's go to our columns. And we go to the column settings. This is the pink one, more settings. And then I'm going to link the padding. And I'll give the padding, and that's for top, right, bottom, and left, 30 pixels. And after I've done that, I'm going to do this going to drag it all the way here, click here, and then center align it. Now, that's starting to look like something, but why on earth do we have this space over here? And that's because of this second column over here. If there's nothing in this column, it's going to stay on this height. I think on the front end, it won't display. Let me just update and let's go have a look on the front end. I think it's not going to display. Let me just be sure. Yeah, it, it's not. You see, it's going to look okay. But in the back end, it's going to look like this. And to get rid of that, you just throw a spacer in there. So go to Add Elements, grab your spacer, drop it, and you see now it reduces to the size of the spacer and it looks more manageable. Right. Good. So we are getting there. Two things that we want to do now for this block title that we've created here. The first one, it's too close to this border. You see, that's just too close. We need a little bit space in here. To do that, I'll go to the block, settings, more settings, and here with padding, I will look on the left, and I think I added 100 pixels. So I'm going to add 100 pixels and push it and give me a little bit of white space there, a little bit more separation. Immediately, it looks much better. And then the next thing is I want to bring this so that it populates the bottom part of this block. To do that, you go again to the block settings, settings, and over here, content, you choose this one on the right, bottom, boom, boom, baby, drops there to the bottom. Hmm. On second thoughts, I want to change the font here. I think I want to use a font called Overpass. 
So the first thing I'll do is go to styling and make sure that my paragraph is set to overpass. It's not going to update here. And the reason is because I messed around with the size and it put it on custom. So I'll have to come and put this one on overpass. That's way too big. I'll reduce it to something a little bit more special and that's 23. Now, once I've done that, something strange and I haven't been able to figure out what causes this. You can see that there, the space at the bottom is larger than the space at the top. And I've really tried everything. I just don't know how to get these two to look the same. And the only way to do that is to go to the padding here and I'll go to my column more settings. And what I'll do is delink the padding sides. And for the bottom, I'm going to deduct five pixels. I figure out it's around five pixels and then things look better. You see? Presto, we got it. Next, bring in a button. So I'll go to add elements, grab my button and I'll drag it here where you see the thick gray line running all the way from the left to the right and I'll drop it. Click on the button and let's align it first all the way to the left. Click on it, click on it, and now it's to the left. Go to settings while we are here and make sure your margin is all the way to zero. I link it and when it links it, it takes out all the space, puts it at zero, and you can see there's no space between this block that we've created and the button. Let's go work on the button. Double click to select the text and we type in view project. Now again, because we are working with a preset style, this is a button. If you click here on styling and you scroll to the bottom, you will see the button. Click here and click on overpass. Oh, it is on overpass. Sorry, it's already on overpass. My apologies, it was on overpass from the beginning. So we can leave that and then we go and style it. I'm going to go here to the little finger, that's this button, and then I will remove the icon. Go back to button and then next, I think over here, all of this I will leave for now. So let's jump into this one over here, topography, and I will increase the letter spacing and I will take it down to 14, yep, and then change the color. And I'm going to use this one again over here. Now, these are the default colors that came in, but this one that is 1C, 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 I like this actually. It's a very neutral color. And in fact, when I hovered over it and the default green was there, I thought, well, it complements the pink. So I really had very little issues with this one. So I, I, I kept it like this. I didn't make changes here. I want to reduce the spacing at the top and bottom a little bit. So you go again to your topography, make sure your line height is set to zero or one. And then you go over here to your button and you go to size and over here where you see the three dots, you have control over width and height. And with the height, I will just increase it a little bit. Mm, 17, click there, down arrow, take it to, let's see, 14. Yeah. So this is the effect that I want here. And it's perfect. It's perfect for desktop. I don't want anything more, except did we put it on parallel? Let me go check here, over here, and then background. No, for the parallax effect to work, you have to go here and put it on fixed. And you're going to see it's going to give you this very unbalanced picture. Don't make any changes here now. We're going to work with this one a little bit later. For now, let's just get the whole framework done. Nope, oh, looks good. Now. Let's style our tablet and then let's style our mobile phone. I'm going to use a shortcut key. You can go here to the sidebar on the left, click on mobile view and select tablet, select mobile. This is how you will go through the different views. I use a shortcut key and that is control minus or command minus. So control minus on my keyboard, it takes me into tablet view. We make a few changes here. Actually, honestly, this still looks very good for a interior design concept. I can think of how this will look in a magazine and I think this is acceptable, but I'm going to style it a little bit. So I'll grab the slider handle here and I'll drag it out until it's like so. And because I extended this column, you will see that the second column, pink column has now jumped to a second line. Simply grab the handle here and drag it back like so. Good. And then we go here Click on the text, you will see the settings again margin. So I'm going to put that on zero and then we go to our column. We link it 
and I'll put it on 25. Now after that, I'll delink it and the bottom I'll take away five pixels. That's just my little thing that I've got to hang up about. Doesn't look, it looks like there's five pixels added there, have no idea why. And then we click on the button. And on the button, we're going to link the margins again to put it on zero to take away that space, right? So this is what we've got here at the moment. It looks like it's at the bottom of this block, but there's actually color here. It's just very faded. I want to change the thickness of this one. So click on the button, go to topography. And from this one, I'm going to choose normal and I'll give it letter spacing over here, right? So. There, we, there we've done it. We've done our tablet. Looks very good. If I press Control S on my keyboard, this is desktop, Control minus, and then Control minus take us into, we are now in our good friend mobile view. Now here in mobile view, we have a problem that we have this column and then the second column, and they are now stacked. Well, this is going to be a problem because I'm not going to be able to squash this column here and still think everything will fit in. So to get around this, I'm going to disable the second column. You go to the column, click on the pink little settings icon, and then over here, you click on disable, or what is it? Uh, hide it, hide it, not disable. And because I've hidden it now, it disappears. It's not gone, it's there. And if you want to see whether it's there, here in the bottom with your toolbar, you will see there's the eye with a slash through it. This is disable, enable the view of hidden elements. So if I enable the view, you will see it appears here. And it's a little bit blurry, indicating that it's actually hidden. But when you are building this out, you need it to be gone. So that's why you go back here and you say, hide those disabled elements. And again, we have this spacing issue. So I'll do the same thing. I'm going to reduce my line height, click in the text, it's already on one. Then we go to our column, padding, link them, and I'll give this 15. And then for the bottom, unlink it, take away five, it's at 10, right? Looks better. Click here on the button, link the margins, and there's still space there. And if you had a hawk's eye, you would have noticed when I went to the pink column, they've applied margins here as well. So link them. It's at 10, so type in zero. And now you would have removed all that space. And there you go. This is how it's going to look on a mobile device. The question you may have is, why on earth are there margins applied to that column in mobile view, but it's not applied in desktop and tablet? And those are preset settings for the various displays. That has been designed on purpose like that. And if you are building out a site very quickly with various content and you're not going to make it look the way we are doing here, that works like a charm. But if you're going to get all fancy and bring in all kinds of doodly daddlies like we are doing here and changing things around, then you need to remove it. You do it once, remove everything, and now that we've done it, we can simply go and duplicate what we've done. This is super easy. It feels like cheating. I really think it feels like cheating. So let's go back to desktop, control plus, control plus, and let's save our work, control command S. And then we're going to preview it. And I'm going to say it until they give it to me. I need a shortcut key for preview, please. I preview so often, I would love a shortcut key for that. So let's see how it looks now. Yep, that's how it looks. Not the best so far interior design presentation you ever want to make, but we will fix that. And then we can view it in a mobile device and also tablet. And to do that in any browser, you just press F12. The first thing you will notice is that over here, our text is a little bit squashed. And the reason for that is that this is basically a laptop resolution that you see here. This is already a good indication of how it will display on the smaller devices like your laptops. And I think having a second line break should be fine for me if it runs into a longer title when we swap it out with the real title. That's good for me. I still think it's okay. I could maybe extend it if I want to, but that will depend on the title once I start changing it. So for me, ah, it's okay. To activate the tablet and mobile displays, go up here and you will see there's usually a little thing that looks like a tablet or a cell phone. 
And when you click on it, it's going to take you into those responsive views. So first of all, here we have iPhone X, but I'm going to drop it over to iPad so you can see how that will look. And that is what we had done. That's exactly how we had set it up on a tablet. And then go back to iPhone X. And I'm wondering, hmm, is the text not a little too big? I'm in two minds about this, but I think I'm going to leave it like this. If I had to go and tweak it, I will probably decrease the font size just a little bit so that it, it doesn't look that big, but I think it still looks okay. Right, so I'll deactivate this, and then we're back and go to F12, and this is our front end again. This F12 works on all browsers, so you should do that. I know many people do the following. They minimize their browser like this, and then they drag it. This is not a good suggestion. It, you just don't get the way it should look. Rather go for the F12 and those dedicated devices, and you will get a good idea of how it will display on them. All right, so let's close all of this. We've done a bang on job. Now what we're going to do, the cheating part, is we're going to duplicate this and just change the images. So I'll go to the block up here and duplicate it. And this is a very cool effect. And the reason why this is happening is because I've got two blocks. They've got the same image in the background. They both set to parallax fix. So this is the effect that you get. And I'm thinking you're starting to think, aha, I ah. And, and we'll do something like this in the future tutorial. But for now, nope. We're going to go to the second block here, settings, background, take it out, and bring in our second image. And that's all we're going to do. We're going to bring it in, and then we're going to duplicate this one. Then we go to the third one. Same thing, change the image over here. And we're going to do this two more times. Duplicate, same thing. Image number four. And then the final one, duplicate that. and then bring in image number five. And we've done our home page. Yeah, we've set it up. You still need to go and of course, put in the right images and change the text. So if your project had a specific name, you'll type it in there. This one has a specific name. You'll type it and you'll swap out those project names with the various images that you're going to use. The beauty is here because we've set up this first block. We don't have to do anything for two, three, four, and five. So let's save it, Control Command S, and then we go and preview it. Is it playing the way it should be playing in those parallax zones? And I can guarantee you it's going to do that on your desktop, no problem with that. So here we go. Look at that, very nice. And the whole idea is actually to get people to do this up and down so they can get to look at the image. And this is a very nice way, actually, if you are presenting a portfolio, to get people to interact with your work. And then if they're interested, they're going to click on View Project, and that's going to take them to a page for that specific project. Before we start looking at that, I want to make a few changes to this one here. I want to bring in the interior designer's name, and then I want to bring this a little bit more in focus. Otherwise, who's proud of a pink wall? So let's close this, and then we go to the top, and what I'm going to do is I'll first duplicate this blue column. So I'll go to the blue column here and say duplicate. So you have these two columns now next to each other, but that's not what I want. So I'll go to the second column, click on the blue settings like a handle, hold and drag it until you see that thick gray line on top of the other one and let it go. And now you have these two on top of each other. Next, I'm going to grab a spacer. Drag the spacer between the two, right? Then I'll go over here, I'm going to delete the button, and then I'll go to this one, and I'm going to extend it already, like so. Triple click to select the text, and I'm going to type in here, Jeanette Koleski, Koleski Brothers, pipe and interior designer consultant and I can decide how big I want that to look by dragging the column around like so, even like this. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the spacer and I'll drag it. And you see I'm dragging it, I'm pushing her bar all the way to the top. 
And now I'm going to add more space to the bottom to bring in the sofa. This way, I'm making this block bigger than the others. The reason I didn't do it at the beginning is because I wanted to use it as a template for the rest. That's why I styled it like this, copied, duplicated it, and then I came back and I made these changes. So let's see if we can do a little bit more here. Go to the block settings up here, to the background, and I'll grab my selector to the bottom. That gives us a little bit more space, not much. So let me go to the top. Let me see if I bring in padding at the top. There we go. Right. And if this doesn't work, and if you want more of the sofa and the chairs in the picture, you will have to go actually and format the image and, and edit it so that it will allow you to do that. But I'm going to be happy with this one. Voila. Let's go and see how this looks on a tablet because it may look different. You have to decide here, do you want it like this? Yep, and then you can click, where is the second one over here? I'm just going to reduce it. Okay, good. Control minus, command minus. And for this one, I'm actually going to squash it like this. Okay, not ideal. Interior designer consultant. If I put consultant and let's change the, <gasps> Ooh. okay, I like that. I'm going to leave it. You see, this is what I say. I keep making changes when I come around the second time. I think this one works. Here he is. If I put this one on the right, Ooh, this one on the right. Hmm. You see, this is the kind of things I do. Now I have to go and do it for all of them. I will probably would have done that because I do like this display at this moment but I'm only going to do it for this one. You, don't be lazy. Don't do what I do, do what I say. And for a moment, I forgot what I had to say. Control plus, control plus, control S, command S to save. We go to the front end again. You need to do this. And I know it's boring to watch me do it, but if I don't do it and I come at the end, I'm going to run into mistakes and I'm not going to know how to do that. So that's the same thing here. Good. And we're done with the homepage, or are we? No, we're not but we can work on that a little bit later. Now we're going to create a second page and the second page is going to be the project page. When the visitor comes to your site or the client you have sent this portfolio to, they say, okay, I want to view the project. They're going to click here, but it's got to take them somewhere, right? And that's going to be this project, this interior design project that Jeanette has done and that they can view it and maybe she has some things that she wants to tell them more about this site. So dear friends and family, we need to create a new page. Let's close this one and then go to settings on the left in the sidebar here. And the settings screen opens and you will see it's by default on pages. And this is the page that we had worked on, the home page. Click here at add new page and that we're going to call project one so that we know what we are working with. To change the name of this, click here on settings, and I'll call it project one. And then I also have to give it a permalink, that little slug that appears there at the top. And for that, I'm going to call it project dash one, no spaces, dashes, and then save. And to begin editing that page, you have to click here on edit page and it will swap the home page, bring in the project page, and we begin building from scratch. First thing I will do is bring in my blank block, and then I'm going to bring in an image for it, and I'll use the same image as that first block because we're working now with this one. For this one, I'm going to go to the settings, and for the height, I'll put it on full height. So I want it to extend all the way from the top to the bottom on any device. And then we have to bring in here some text. So mm, this is maybe some project that she did for some client and the client gave her a theme like, I want to find my space. So she called it finding your space. Bring in a text element, click here on add elements, drop it in the middle, and then I'm going to select everything and type find, mm, can I see it? No, finding your space and I cannot see it. So what I'll do is I'm going to put it on white. And next, after I did that, I'm going to press enter. I'm going to create basically a new paragraph. Here I'm going to type interior project with a pipe and we say 12 March 2020. 
the good old days. And then under here, a little description, unknown client, because I don't know, and it's just placeholder takes. And we're going to say it's a disputable address and location. Location, hey, come on, location. And then last part will be unspeakable actions. So this you will change with a little bit of interesting information about this client. And of course you have to get the permission to do that. Now I will center align all of them, but because I pressed enter return on the keyboard, you basically created three different text elements within this element. So if I have my cursor here in the last line and I click on align to center, it's only going to align this one to undo control Z command Z. To do it to all of it, you just click in there and select everything with your cursor or like I will do with a shortcut key, control A, command A. And now you go and you center align them. Next, click in the top line. You just have to click. You don't have to select everything and let's style this one out. So for topography, we are in overpass and I'm just going to give it a big one like 64. Let's see how big is 64. Hmm, let's go for 72. Ooh, that's 79, 72, and let's put it on black, right? Black, I think I want to make it even a little bit bigger, 84 at another 12, and I'm going to reduce actually the letter spacing a little bit just to, oh, finding your space is difficult if I'm squashing it, but I'm still going to do it to minus three. Good, I like it. Line height here, I'm going to reduce it all the way to one. I want these guys closer to each other. Then click on the next one. I think this is fine. Let me just see these guys, but I want to reduce the line height also a little bit here. Okay. Then these two are too close to each other, but I'm not going to increase the line height. What I'm going to do is click on the top one, finding your space, go to settings and you will see here, gap above and gap below. I'm going to increase the gap below. <gasps> yes, you can do that, right? So. Let me select these two lines at the bottom, go to topography and put that on light. Yeah, make it a little bit lighter. Now I want to push all of this content to the top, but we have a problem here because we've set the block to full height. So the only way the block allows me to do that is go to settings up here and I can put it to the top, but then it's all the way at the top and I don't want it there. I want it kind of here. I have the bottom, absolutely not. And middle, hmm, it it's actually it looks pretty good there on the sofa's edge, but no. So leave it there. And what we do to circumvent this issue we are facing with is to go to add elements and drag a spacer below it. And then click on the spacer and drag it until it gets to a position where you feel happy with it. Uh-huh. That's how we did that one. But we're not done here. I want to add a button up here so that when people click on it, it can take them back to the home page. But again, remember, this is not your typical website. So we don't have the headers and menus at the top. We want to make it feel very much like a portfolio. What I'll do for that is I'm going to bring in an icon. I'll click here on add elements icon and I'll drop it here at the top. Click on the element. Let's go to here icon and we search for a home. And over here is a home. I'll change the color first to white. And then background, I'm going to put on white. And border, okay, so let me, I'm, I'm screwing up a little bit here. So let's click out Control Z and Control Z two times to take it back to the default. Let me click on it. Let me go back to icon. And then what we'll do is background. Let's start here and we're going to give it a fill. So click here on fill. There you see it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the border away like so. Okay. And I think that looks okay. I'll go to the icon and I'll reduce the size of the icon to 32, but then I'll go to background and I'll increase the size of the background. That brings back the border. Annoying. So let's just drag the border out again. So do this before you go to color. That's why I redid what I did over there. Redid what I did. Hmm. Okay, icon now. So I want the icon to be the same pink as the background. And for that, I'm going to use my color picker up here, color pick eyedropper, which is an extension for Chrome. You can get it for free. Just look for color pick eyedropper and extend it to your Chrome. And then 
anywhere I click, I'll get my color code. Copy that. Click back here. And then for the icon over here, select the hexadecimal code and paste the new one. Control V. And now it looks like this. For the background, I want that on white. Click on white. Mm, nice white. And no border. And then what's going to happen when I hover over it, I want the icon to be white. And I want the background to disappear. Let's see if that works. Hover over it. Perfect. To style it and make it look good, I'll click on it and put it on the left. And now I want to put it somewhere here at the top. So the first thing I'll do is go up to here where I know my padding is, and I'll reduce that. 15 currently, that's fine. And now I'll bring in a spacer between these two. Same trick I did down here. We'll wait. Spacer. Drop. And now I will drag it a little bit, and then I'll drag the bottom one again, like so. Alrighty, we have success in the land of failure. That's it. And this is my hero, but we'll have to go and look how this will look on our tablet. And I think on my tablet, I'll just add again space here. Well, that's not going to work. So what we'll do here is, ah, I'm going to reduce my text size. Let's put that down to 64. Yeah, that's fine with me. Good. I want to have a little bit more space here. So let's go to our block and put padding on the left. It's currently on 15. I'm going to put it on 45. Why? I don't know. I just chose the number 45 and it works for me. <laughs> That's how it goes. Wish there were an answer to that. And then mobile, same thing. Hmm. I actually like it this big. Maybe it's a little too big. But I think this is very strong except down here i don't really like what it has done down here not sure why it did that okay let me just reduce the line height here ah okay that's better but that is too squashed so let's go again put it on 1.5 okay it looks good i don't have a problem with this nigel let's go to the front end con uh, not the front end to the desktop which is control plus control plus and now we link this icon so that when people click on it, it will take you to the home page. Click on it, and from here, you will see the link appear. Click on the link, and you're going to link it. And because this is a page within your site, you only need to give it a very short link. When it is a page, you always have to start with a forward slash. So you type that. And then the second thing you have to do is type in its permalink. And if you don't know what the permalink is, go here to the sidebar on the left, settings, and it will open the pages and look here at home. It says forward slash home. Okay, so you know it's home. So let's do that again. Click on it. Click on it. Link forward slash and type in home. Update. Let's view it on the front end to test that. And when I click here on home, it's going to take me to my home page. I'm not surprised at all. <laughs> right. What we want to do, of course, is link this button to that page. We can do that at the end. Let's close this and work on the rest of the page. And here comes a lot of cheating next. This kind of project, when you're working with other people, and what I mean by other people are people who are not designing and developing websites. Why? Because they don't know how these things look. So using pre-made blocks and pre-made templates, nobody will catch you out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in a pre-made block. Go to the bottom, add a new block, and I will probably want to say something a little bit about what I had done for this site. So what I'll do is I'll go to text over here. Kit 2, light, text, and from here I'm going to select, select, select this one. And I'll bring it in. Fall seven times and stand up eight. <laughs> how motivational right and then all i'm going to do here and the great thing the great thing about bringing in it like this is that if i go to tablet it's already styled well same for mobile i have to do almost nothing almost nothing let's just go back here and what i'll do is i'll bring in a little bit more space click and drag here that's what i'm doing where you see the blue bar for the padding and same for the bottom i just like to bring in a little bit more space the rest, all of this, you will have to go and bring in your own text. 
I'm super lazy, so I'm not going to change any of these texts. And the fact that I already use a pre-made block tells you I'm not going to do anything extra here. That will depend on the client you are working with or the portfolio you are working with. Go down, control minus, and I think here again, I'll add some space. And one more to your mobile device, control minus. Here is one thing that I want to point out to you. When you work with this narrow space, make absolutely sure that you apply the same justification to your text throughout a specific block. And what I mean by justification, is it left? Is it center? Is it right or justified? Now, please stay away from justified. I, I don't want to even see that. You know, I'm going to hit you with a wooden spoon if you do that. But here you see that this is to the left and this is center aligned. You have to choose one of the two. You cannot have both. This is just not how it should be. So for these two up here, I'm going to flush them also to the left. And make sure you don't use justification. Make sure it's to the left. And this looks much better. I'll add a little bit space up there, space here. All right, let's go back to our desktop, Control plus plus, and there we go. Next, I'll add an image here, and I can just drop it in the same block. For some reason, when I work with different ideas, I like to put them in different blocks. Maybe in the future, if I'm not happy with their placement on the page, it's easier to move them around. So I'll bring in a new block. And then all I'm going to do is drag an image element in here and upload this one that has the color theme in it. Right? And then first thing, go to the settings and make sure the height is on 100%. Otherwise, you're basically cropping the image. Then I'll click on it, grab the handles here in the bottom, and I'll just drag it a little bit smaller so it looks better. And even though it's a different block, I still want it to feel like it's part of this block. So what I'll do up here, I'll reduce the padding. When I hover here, click and drag. And same here for this one, click and drag it a little bit like so. Good. There we go. Again, let's see it on tablet. Same thing, I'm just going to reduce the padding. Click here. And then for this block at the top, reduce that. And you can decide, do you want it a little bit bigger here? I think maybe a little bit bigger. And then Control minus for our mobile. Again, reduce the padding. Where is it? Over here. Same here. And in this case, I'm going to enlarge it. So I grab the corners and drag it. Ooh. Let me... And I've run into this before. Let me update it just quickly. I don't know why this error happens. Refresh. Strange little arrow. Control minus. Let's go down again. There's our image. Click on it. And let me choose size 100%. That will fill the width. There we go. Okay. Got that done. I need to reduce a little bit more here. Hmm. So go back to desktop, control plus, control plus. And now we've done that. Very nice little informative section about this design that you had done and the color palette that you had done. I'm thinking maybe it's a little too big. Just reduce it. There we go. Okay, good. And unfortunately, one of the things that I learned in my life, which you'll also have to get used to, is that sometimes we just don't care about the precise pixels. So for this case, you saw me just dragging it like this, and I'm just gauging it with my eye until I feel satisfied with it. And like I said, maybe when I come back tonight, I'll say, oh, this is too big. Let me make it smaller. And then on Sunday, I come back and I make it a little bit bigger. Yeah, very inferior. One of those things. Next, we're going to work on another section. We bring in some more text. So I'll add a new block here. And then let's go to our text over here. Hmm. This one, let's bring in this one. And I'm going to make quite a number of changes here. So what I want to do is I want to change the background color to this pink here. I can just type that number. Again, I'm going to grab my eye color picker, eye drop color picker, and copy that code. Then I'll go to this block. And then where am I? Here. For the overlay, paste that color. 
There we go. So what we need to do now for all of these guys here is we need to change the color. And unfortunately, you will have to click on each one separately and change the color. And I'm doing that for all of them. So apart from changing the color, you naturally will have to go and change the content as well. So you will have to bring in different icons over here. Also for the hover, different titles and different text. But then it's done. Over here and over here. Good. Let's make this title bigger. So I'll go to my topography. I'm going to double the size, which is 72. And again, I'm going to be happy with it, except I'm going to reduce the letter spacing even a little bit more. Is it on bold? Is there black? Let's put it on black. Yep. There we go. That's good. And Again, there's, there's no reason for you to reinvent this layout. It's there already within the pre-made blocks. Go ahead and use it. And of course, if you have Brizzy Pro, if you go here to add a new block and you have Brizzy Pro, you will see you have access to far more blocks than just the free ones. Some of them better designed, better styling, much more modern, includes more features. So if you want to have access to those, you will have to go pro. Check the link in the description below. I'll add a little bit space up here and I'll add a little bit space here. Let's bring in a divider. Now, what I want is this pink to spill over into this block up here and the next block down here. And you may be tempted to apply it to this block, but what I found is that it's better to apply it to the adjacent block. So instead of applying a divider here, I'll go up here and bear with me. Where's this block over here? Settings, more settings, and I'll scroll down so we can have a look at what's going down here. So we're going to apply a divider to this block, and it will be at the bottom. So you have to select this one here, bottom, and then the type you can select from here. Let me find that divider that I was happy with, and now it seems I cannot find it. I guess it's this one. Yep, it's this one. And now here where the color is, I still have that pink code that I had copied going to select that, control V, paste the pink. And look at that. Whoa, seamless integration like you've never seen before. Let's reduce this a little bit and give more space up here. So I'll drag it like so. Ah, that was easy actually, right? Very, very easy. And we'll do the same here, but we're not going to do it to this block. We'll do it to the next block that we are bringing in. And that block, guess what I'm going to do is another pre-made block. Yeah, I'm cheating big time here. But I really don't think you should be spending that much time on something, especially like a portfolio like this, where you can share it and people are more interested in the images, in what you've done, and then how to contact you. Contact, let's talk about that. And that's over here in the categories, contact. And I'll click here on contact. Let's look for a free one. And the one I chose that got lucky is this one here, get in touch. And the first thing I'll do is to change the divider up here. So we go to the settings of the block, settings, more settings. And now you're going to apply the divider at the top and the top is selected by default. Same divider. So from type, I have to select, now they're upside down. I think it's this one. Nope, not that one. Uh, let me, this one. Yeah, that one. And then change the color again, paste the pink color. And there we go. It's reduced the padding up here and reduce the padding to increase. Uh, where am I here? Increase the padding here. And I'm going to increase it quite a lot. Okay. Did we change the tablet and mobile for this one? I think we didn't. We can go back to that soon. Here, I'm going to change the text. I'll just type in here, work with me. And then you're going to change the email and the address over here and then set up the form here. The only thing I will change is this button at this moment. Click on the button, and because I still have my pink loaded for the background, I'm going to paste that code. I also want to change this background. You can see this background is currently not white. This is white, here is white. So this is a hmm, off gray. What I'll do, no off gray, it's off white. I'll go up here to this image and this one, Thistle. I'm going to select my eye color picker, eye color picker, yes, and select that one. Control C, Command C. Go to the block, overlay, select it and paste it. And just bring in that theme 
uniformity that we like throughout this. And the last thing I'm going to do is bring in a home block at the bottom, a little similar to this one up here, but very, very simple. So I'll bring in a new block. And then what I'll do is I'll bring in a text element. Let's change the color first. Let's just put it on okay, overlay this one. And then click on the text, center align it. Let's make it white. Double click to select it and say back home. And then you go to link. And remember, how do you go to a page in your site? Forward slash plus the permalink, which is home. I think you remember that. And then I'll come down here and you see as I hover at the top and the bottom, I have that padding space. I'll click and drag to take it away. Same for the one at the bottom. That's good enough. Update. Preview it on the front end. And here we go. Great stuff. And you're back home. If I click on it, it will take me to my Parallax homepage. A few things that we still need to clean up here, and that is tablet view for these two. Let's go to tablet. Aha, uh -huh, you see, that's why we have to do that. This one I think looks fine. This one I will add space here. Maybe reduce a little bit there. See here. Okay, I'll reduce that. Oh, now I'll increase that. And the work with me. Hmm. Hmm. Let's reduce it a little bit. So 46. Let's make it 38. Nope. 38 didn't do it. Let's make it 36. 36. No. 24. Okay. It still does the job. And here at the bottom, I'm going to take away the padding for our little small footer. Control minus to tablet, not to tablet, to mobile. And I like this. I like the fact that it overlaps here. So in fact, I'm going to, where is this one? Can I get there? Seems I cannot get there. I'm going to drag that away, this away too. I like this effect. Nicely done, good job. And here I'll just, not that one over here. Think carefully now. Where am I? This one. Okay, there we go. And if you cannot grab it correctly, just click here on the block settings and you can adjust the padding up here. And this is good. This is designed. But what I'll do here is I'll remove this space. So click on the column and you'll see that the padding is set here for the left to 30 pixels. I will take that away so that we have it all aligned to the left. And same here for the one thing very important that you have to note when you work with mobile displays is that if I were to reduce all this padding and make it very, very small, you will actually get penalized for that in Google because Google tries to consider the average human's finger or thumb and can they easily press that on a mobile device. And if your button is too small and too close to other elements in a mobile device, you will actually get a penalty for that. Trust me, I've done that how many times to myself and Google doesn't like it. So when you work with mobile displays, you have to have your call to actions further apart from each other so that people don't make mistakes by pressing on it and by mistake pressing on an adjacent button. And that is our page. Now we are going to look at, I think, two more things before we call it a day. Let's save Control S, Command S. Let's just go view it on the front end and do the test of F12. Always a heartbreaking test when you've done a lot of work and then it doesn't look good. Tell them to go home and open their laptop and view it on the desktop, right? Okay, F12, let's do it. Activate it over here and let's start with our iPad. That's good. That's good. I like it. Absolutely. And then let's go for iPhone X. We did that intentionally, right? <laughs> Just reminding you. And here we aligned all of this to the left. Looking good. Maybe we can reduce the space there. Maybe we don't care. This looks good. Easy, easy button here at the bottom. Perfect 100. Perfect 10. Let's delink that. 
disable it, F12, and that's it. Let's close it. So what we have here in the back, let's just go to our desktop. What we have here is we have set up all these links that can take us to our home page at the top and at the bottom. But how can we get from our home page to this page? Let's just save everything again. And so we have to go back to our home page. And to do that, you go to the settings again and you select home, go over here, edit page. This will load your home page, swap it out for the project one that we've been working on. Over here, what we want is when people click on this button, it will take them to that project page that we had been working on. Click on the button, click on the link, and do you remember how to link it to another page? Forward slash, and do you remember the slug, the permalink you gave this one? I do, project dash one. And if you forget, all you do is go here to settings, pages, and look here what it is. And you can even highlight it, copy it, go back to your page, and you can simply paste it. Update to the front. View project. Eureka. There we go. To the home page. So important now is that we've only done one project. We've only done this project. We haven't done this project. We haven't done this one. We haven't done this one. Or we haven't done this one. And that is something you're going to do on your own. But it's quite possible that you are very happy with how you designed this one and that you want to do the same for the other ones. Now, one of, I believe, the most requested features in Brizzy at this moment is clone or duplicate pages. That would be so nifty, right? If I can just take this page and clone it and then swap everything out and I can use it. Unfortunately, in Brizzy, this doesn't exist at this moment, but it's absolutely in the works. So if my prayers are answered in the next few hours before I even post this, maybe it would have been released, but that's just wishful thinking. There is a workaround, but remember, a workaround always involves more steps. So let me show you the workaround. Close this one. Let's go to the back end and we have to go to that page that we had created for project one. Go to settings. Load project one over here, clicking on edit page. And now what we're going to do is we are going to save each of these blocks that we've made. So we start at the very top. We go to the block and over here where you see the heart, Click on save and it says saved. You move to the next one. Saved or save and saved. Same for this one. Save. And we just keep doing this. Same for this one. And this one. Strictly speaking, you can make this one a global block, but I'm not going to do that. I'll just put it on saved. Now we have saved all of these guys. What we can do now is go and create our second project. Go to the settings and click on add new page. And this one, you guessed it, we're going to call it project two. And then over here, permalink, we're going to call it project dash two and save it. Click to edit. Start building your page, and now you go to Saved Blocks. And it's purely a matter of dropping them in as you had created them. So here is my top one. Go to the next one, Save Blocks. Which one? This one. Save Blocks. This one. And then this one. And yes, it's definitely more steps than you would have liked to add to it but you're getting the job done. And very soon we will have that duplicate function and you won't need to do this. And all you're going to do then, swap out the images, change the colors, change the text. So your relaxing zone, this is probably the new one here. Let's grab a new color. We grab this yellow here. Click here, 
change the icon color to yellow. Nicely done. And then you're going to bring in a new image here and same over here. You may want to use a darker, uh, no, that's actually pretty okay. Go here, over here. You never know, right, until you do it. Hmm. And what you are achieving by doing it this way is that you're making your page and your site looking consistent. And that is extremely important. Having this consistency in look and feel will make people feel that your site just feels right. They won't even know why, but they'll know it feels right. So over here, let's change this one. Uh, what is it? Background, right? Okay, background. And then you will have to bring in also a different one for this one. What I'll do is I'll do it like this and I'll reduce it all the way here. And this one I will have to go and change. I didn't make an image for that. And that's it. So the only other thing now that you will have to do, let's update this. You'll have to go again to your front end or rather to your home page. Edit on this one. And you go to the button for this one. Link, link to forward slash project dash two. Save, update. Preview it on the front end. Let's see. View project. And we are so satisfied. We look at our new project. Ooh la la. And you can click here on back home, takes you to the front again. View this project and we've set it up very, very nicely. Job well done. Job well done. Handshakes all around. Champagne for everyone. And let's close this one. Settings. Last part that I want to talk about, which you have to take care of before you send this on into the big wide world, is to go and change the settings up here. This is the name that's going to appear in the tab. So your site title is going to be Interior Designer Extraordinaire. Designer Extraordinaire. How do you spell Extraordinaire? Google doesn't want to tell me. Extraordinaire. Extraordinaire. I got it right. Let me see. Extraordinaire. Yeah, okay, there we go. Extraordinaire. I can just imagine how she's going to spell it. Extraordinaire with an E, right? Okay, extraordinaire. And then over here, uh, witness the power of Jeanette Poleski at work in her studio. And then down here, a little image called a favicon. And I don't think I've given Jeanette a favicon. So let's bring in a favicon quickly for her. Let me not say that. I'm here on flat icon. So let's look for interior, interior design. See what they give us. Sparkles, sparkles. Ooh, oh, there's a quite a number we can choose from here. But something that's going to look good as a favicon, because these guys are highly detailed, not going to display well as a favicon. So it has to be very simple. I like this one actually over here. But you, you know I'm going to take the stairs, all right? Take the stairs, man. And over here, I'm just going to choose this one with the color and download it as a PNG. So let's download it as PNG. Good. Down there. Jump back here and then select Go to my downloads PNG, open that, ta -da, and save changes. And it's not going to display while you are working within Brizzy. Update your work, but it will display when you go to the front end. So let's select preview. You will see it update there at the top. Interior designer extraordinaire. And then there is the little icon for Jeanette Kuleski. So let's have a look at the rest of the settings. Go to the settings in the sidebar on the left. And then if you click here on settings, you also have the option for social sharing. So if Jeanette is of the mind and of the opinion that she should open a Facebook page and she wants to share this page on Facebook, she should do some little updates here, bring in an image, and that's how it will display there. But otherwise, nothing more that she has to do. Update, 
and we're not done, let's go to the dashboard. We've created this page, bottom left-hand corner, go to dashboard. And what we want to do now is personalize it just a tad more so that when she sends this out to prospective clients, they will feel that this is really her product. At this moment, it says HTTPS forward slash forward slash coconut. And that's the last thing you want to tell a client that your website starts with the name coconut. So when you click on here, it's going to give you the publishing options. And what you do here is you click here on choose. Select it, change it. And I'm going to say Jeanette Kuleski. That's all. Submit. And I'm pretty sure it's not taken. I would have eaten two hats if that one was taken. There you see the link now. So from here to share it, click up here on open. And then you grab the link that will appear here in the URL. Give it some time. There you see Jeanette Kuleski.brizzy.site. Control C. And if you were to go to any other browser, I'll open this one from Blisk. Drop it in there. Control V. Enter. And your client sits at home in their pajamas because they're locked in and locked down. They don't want to go anywhere. They look at your side like, mm, great. Once I get out of this house and I can allow you to come back in, I'm definitely going for this one. Let me view this project. And then they view the project. Like, Ooh, oh, wow. This woman did a lot of work and they are very impressed with your site. And already they're taking out their checkbook and deciding to give you their money. And if they want to look at your next project, click on home and then they go to the next project. Now, where is the time? I always want to check the time. I think we're around one hour, 20 minutes, maybe a little bit less. And again, I want to tell you, don't be fooled by this kind of tutorial. I say it very openly and very honestly to you. Any tutorial online that tells you build a website in under an hour, it's the biggest load of rubbish that you can ever hear in your life. Yes, you can build it, but preparing for it is going to take you an hour plus. If Jeanette has to go and take photos of this site, that's probably going to take her a few days to set everything up, get it ready, get the images edited. And then she has to work on a wireframe idea, bring in some text and make sure her text works well. And then if she doesn't have a layout like I just gave you here, she's probably going to sit and work on that for a long time as well. And the biggest mistake people make is that they make a website and then next year they want to make a second one and then they cannot understand why it takes them so long. Trust me, I sit and do a page like this two or three a day. This is what I'm currently doing. So the more I do it, the more I know this goes here, this goes there, and this goes here. And that will be my final word of advice. If you want to get better at this, if you want to get more clients, if you want to be more efficient, you cannot wait for clients. You have to do what I'm showing you to do here. Go get images on Unsplash, Pixabay, Pixels, wherever, and just make these websites. Because once you have a prospective client that comes to you and says, can you make me a website? You tell them, sure, I've got about 12 examples I can show you. Let's see if you like any of them. You actually have demos ready. And, and that will help you a lot. It's going to help you to get better at building. And it's also going to build up your portfolio, ironically. And that's it. So remember, all everything I've done here can be done in both WordPress. Of course, in WordPress, you're going to do the links and the menus a little bit different. Creating pages are also very different in WordPress. But you're going to do all of that exactly the same. They're going to work the same. And how you're going to interact with the builder is exactly the same for WordPress and for Brizzy Cloud. If you don't have any of this and you're just watching it to see how it works, I highly recommend again that you go to brizzy.cloud, sign up for a free account and try it. You've got nothing to lose except time and a few gray hairs. Well, not gray hairs. You don't lose them. You get them because of frustration. That's it from me. Have a good day, a good night. See you again.